Okay, welcome everybody. Thank you so much for um, attending our webinar today on how to speed up your sales cycle with automated scheduling. Um, my name is Sean Finder. I'm the CEO of AutoClose. Uh, we are a sales engagement platform um, that has a built-in B2B database. I've been in sales for 15 years and this is my second company. Um, I'm very active on LinkedIn and I used to actually play semi-professional tennis. And with me today, I'm very happy um, because one of our favorite companies to use and partner, um, David from Calendly is here as well. Hi there, Sean. Uh, very happy to be here with you and with AutoClose today. Um, uh, like Sean mentioned, I'm David Roston. I'm the VP of Sales and Marketing for Calendly. Calendly's a scheduling automation platform that helps sales teams uh, close more deals by getting more leads into their pipeline and, and meeting with them at their height of interest um, at the beginning of the relationship and then throughout the sales nurturing pipeline process. Um, I have never played any sport professionally <laughs> and semi-professionally. Perfect. Well, thank you, David. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of go through what we're going to cover today and then we're going to dive right in. Um, after we kind of do a little fireside chat between David and I, and we talk about both sales automation and scheduling automation. Um, we're going to show you um, a five minute kind of demo of how the two work together inside um, AutoClose and Calendly. And then we're going to open up for you guys to ask David and I any easy, tough questions you guys might have. And, uh, and we're going to get going. So what we're going to cover today is we're going to start off by talking about what is sales automation. Um, we're going to talk about the role of scheduling automation and how it plays in a sales organization. Um, we're going to walk through real life sales and scheduling automation setups. We'll also not, we're actually going to talk about how we at AutoClose actually use Calendly on a daily basis. And I'll actually tell you and give you full disclosure of the results we've had on using Calendly as well. And then throughout, um, there's going to be some general best practices, et cetera, that I'm going to go through and, and talk about. So the, the, the first thing I want to talk about is, you know, what is sales automation? So sales automation is um, taking away those tedious tasks that an SDR um, hate to do on a daily basis and, and automating that. So kind of, you know, filling that top of the sales funnel um, with, um, with engagement with, and, and, and keeping that very personalized with your prospects. Um, so, you know, the role that, 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 um, that schedule animation takes is we actually integrate that a lot into um, those sales engagement funnels. And we're going to go through that um, today. So the first thing I want to say is, you know, what were people, people doing before and why is sales automation so effective? Um, people before, um, not to say this if salespeople are here, but salespeople are lazy. Um, people would send one to two follow-ups. They go to their manager and they say, oh, I follow up one or two times. That prospect's not interested. Well, that's not usually the case. I know, for example, if you probably going to reach out to David and you sent them one email and a prospecting email today or two, he might not actually reply. But if you sent them four to six and you were persistent and you had that all automated to save you time, you'll see your, your results will drastically increase. So um, that's how things have changed. Now, why are people using sales automation? Well, I'll tell you, um, sales leaders, um, you know, they're looking to consolidate things. You know, there's so many different CRMs, marketing automations, sales automation tools, but putting that all in one place to really consolidate into one place and make it easier for SDRs to save time and obviously the company save money um, is one of the most important things why um, people use sales automation. Now you also have different things. So you have, you know, what do, why do CEOs want sales automation? Well, CEOs want more revenue. Why do national sales managers, for example, want sales automation? Because they want their regional sales managers to book more demos. Um, you know, and then you have, you know, why do SDRs want sales automation? Because it, it automates a lot of their day. So, the best companies in the world are using sales automation. And if they aren't, they're certainly starting to implement it into their sales strategy, into their sales stack. Because at the end of the day, if you can save a prospect 10, 15 hours a week in prospecting, um, any, any sales manager, any CEO would love that. 
and that's exactly um, what uh, what sales automation does. Now, maybe David, you can kind of brief us on you know scheduling automation and and why people use it. Sure thing. Uh, and and the great thing about scheduling automation is it really does go hand in hand with sales automation. Uh, and many of you have probably received a Calendly link before, uh, and I think that. Um, th that experience is probably the best way to start. So there are a couple ways to get a meeting scheduled with someone. They can say, oh, if, are you interested in meeting? If so, email me some available times, and then you pick among your available times, write those in an email, send them back, and maybe they work, and maybe they don't work. Uh, most of you have gone through that experience, uh, probably on both sides, people trying to get a meeting with you and you trying to get a meeting with other people. And what Calendly does is it condenses all that to one touch point. So we integrate with your calendar that you use, so whether it's Office 365 or uh, your Gmail uh, or your, your Google Calendar, and we read your availability Plus, you get to customize it and say, well, I only want to be available for this event during these times, and I want to buffer between meetings so that you really personalize when you want to meet, you share that link. Then your prospect, your in-the-pipeline lead, or your customer you're about to onboard simply has to click that link, find a time you're available, they know you're available that time when they're available, they book it, and you're scheduled. And everything else is taken care of. There's no back and forth. The experience was really great for the person booking the meeting and the person who's scheduling the meeting, you, um, you're, or hosting the meeting, really gets the advantage of booking right when somebody is interested. And that's the key. That's the key to, um, that's the key to marketing and sales automation, and it's the key to booking meetings. Imagine you put all of this time into nurturing someone and then at the very right moment understanding they're ready and asking them in these automation emails uh, if they're ready to meet and then they have to jump through hoops you have to go through that back and forth uh, and then they cool down you've spent a lot of time a lot of energy setting up the right personalized automation and then you can just ruin it by not making it very easy for them to schedule a time with you so i think that that's kind of the underlying purpose of scheduling automation and how it goes hand in hand with uh, with marketing and sales automation. Um, we see a lot of uh, a lot of people using it to uh, book initial meetings with prospects. So uh, and, and qualified leads because when you have a qualified lead, you don't want to waste them. You want to get a meeting set right away. We see a lot of people using it within a sales pipeline to speed up the sales cycle. So right in the middle, you don't have to spend as much time getting you a sales engineer and the customer or the lead on the phone at once. And then right into onboarding and customer success and client relationships after that sale. So it really ties together the whole process of starting and continuing a relationship with some of your best prospects and customers. Yeah, a hundred percent. And it, I, we find that examples when we use Calendly inside ours, like the key is it makes it easy and it saves us a lot of time. Yeah. And we, we see that as well. That's echoed with all of our best customers. Um, and, and it's really easy to set up in some key places, things like putting it inside your campaigns, whether they're uh, nurture campaigns or, um, or campaigns, deliberately for booking demos. Um, we see people put it on their website and then if you if you don't take advantage of it on their website, so just right there, click to book a demo, yeah. then you go into nurturing and then at the right time we serve it up again. A lot of people put it in their email signature so it's always there, kind of a, hey, you know, low pressure, but whenever you're ready, <laughs> not only reach me by email, but you can get on my calendar and we can have a discussion about our product or service. Yeah, and you know, and one thing, you, you guys have gone so big that I was, for example, I was at a conference here in Toronto last week, and I can meet with somebody, and instead of giving a business card or something, I can just be like, you know, do you use Calendly? Like, yeah, well, just Calendly.com slash Sean Finder. All you, have to, all you have to know is my name, yeah. and literally, you can go online and, and book a meeting. So I think there's tons, of, we're going to go through that when you kind of ask me some questions, but there's tons of different use cases you can use both um, the scheduling and the automation for sure. Yeah, I think they just, they just work hand in hand as, as, a, as a very powerful combo. Perfect. 
So I think now we're going to go and David's going to kind of ask me a few different questions. Um, and maybe uh, I'll give some of some of the answers and maybe we're making this more of an interview. And then um, and we'll talk about scheduling and, and both engagement and how we use it, especially here at AutoClose. Yeah, and I think that, Sean, where this really came about from our, our perspective and wanting to do this as an interview of you and how you use the, the tools that we're talking about today, because when we first talked and you were explaining kind of how you did it, how you set it up, uh, it, really, it really echoed what we're seeing, really smart companies who are putting together a great automated process. And we were really excited to see the success yeah. you're having so we thought it'd be a great idea just to dig into that a little bit because there's no better there's no better way to prove it out than how you're seeing success yourself. Yeah. Um, so let's start when when I when we say sales automation, uh, what what specifically does that look like for you at AutoClose? So so what we originally we had was um, you know we were a small team. We we're I guess a year and a half ago we were a startup. And when you're a startup, you, you know, people have to wear different hats, but you also got to almost do four positions in one. So what we did with our sales automation is we build all different campaigns. Now, um, I'm going to give you guys some examples of different campaigns that we run for, um, for in AutoClose. One, which I'll talk about first, is you're going to have people that are going to book demos through your Calendly and book it and book a meeting with you. Now, I would say you can get 20% that might not show up. So two of every 10 might not show up. They might get busy. So we actually have a sequence inside AutoClose that's called missed Calendly. Therefore, if they booked the Calendly but missed it, we actually put them through a follow-up sequence to have them rebook it. Now, the cool thing about, Auto, about Calendly actually is they can reschedule without you touching them. So if they miss it, they can A, reschedule themselves, but also I can take that email and put them through a campaign. So that's one campaign that we do um, here at AutoClose. The second one is a missed demo. Um, so if they miss a demo, um, we do a campaign around missed demos, like why do you miss a demo? Um, even today, for example, we have 300 people that register for this webinar. Whoever doesn't show up is going to be going through a campaign and saying, oh, I noticed you missed your webinar. Here is a recorded demo. Very simple, and it takes seconds to do. Um, and obviously, with our platform is the cold email sequence. So we have a built-in database of 30 million prospects. If you want to reach out to VP of marketing, VP of sales, et cetera, you can go in and build a six email sequence um, to those VPs of sales in say New York and press one click of the button and automate your sequences, but also, which we'll show you soon, have them click on your Calendly, book that demo, and basically it is all automated. So we use it for very like different, different campaigns. Um, actually, I'll give you a good example. Um, I did a campaign two weeks ago. So I was at the Collision Conference in Toronto um, and I had 30,000 people there. And I said, you know what? I'm going to show up to the conference on Tuesday and Wednesday, but on the Thursday, I'm not going to walk the floor. I'm actually going to build a sequence to people that are going to the conference, put my Calendly link inside my sequence and have people book collision conference coffee as an event in my Calendly and book it directly on my Calendly. So literally I went there um, to the conference on Thursday of last week and, and I didn't even actually walk the show or listen to a keynote. I literally had meetings booked all throughout the day by integrating the automation and, and Calendly. I think that that's fantastic. And you touched on a couple of things that we're seeing some successful sales teams doing. Um, one of those is just having different events for when, when they're ready to book and why you are booking. So right at the beginning, you may want just an introductory call, a lightweight, 15 minute, just chat, come on to start to build a relationship. So you'll set up a 15 minute call. Maybe, and, and what our sales team is doing right now is doing a 15-minute call with a 15-minute buffer at the end of it. So, hey, really good calls, they've got time for you. Um, but the expectation is for the, for the person that it's lightweight. And another thing you mentioned that we're seeing some teams do really well is uh, use it at conferences. So yeah. it, it's really good. And you can set up a whole different type of an event. You can set it up that you're just available this day. You can set the location to be Joe's Coffee Shop and, and you could book like that and really customize the event to the purpose. And that's just a way of getting more and more personal to, to the needs of the person you're serving in that meeting, making it more and more likely that they'll both schedule the meeting and also find it valuable because it's for their purpose. Yeah. And actually, one thing I want to add before we go to the next one is 
Um, one thing that we realized and we changed recently, which really worked, I'm giving you guys a little tip, is we actually did a 15 minute call and then we would do, for example, a 30 minute demo. Now, why that was important is because when somebody would go to the calendar, we're almost giving them two options, but we're also pre-qualifying them. Because now the people that want the demos will go right to the demos. The people that might just want our two questions might go to the 15 minutes. And we find with our sales reps, um, it's really pre-qualified them. And the quality of our demos are a lot higher by giving both those events inside our Calendly and letting them choose because they're pre-qualifying themselves, but our SDRs have more information by that. That's a fantastic use case. Um, yeah, I bet you see really good results from that. It makes a lot of sense. So uh, next thing I kind of wanted to, to dive into a bit was if maybe you could talk about why you implemented scheduling automation at first um, and you know, how you did it, how long it took to set up um, and, and get started and start to see some results. Oh, I, I mean, I'll be going through it soon. I mean, I'll just, I'm just going to click here quickly and you can see events right here, uh, 11, but, but why we got started was we would send out emails and our client or prospects would reply and say, yeah, I'm very interested. Okay. What time are you interested at? Oh, Tuesday at three, four or 5 PM work. Oh, okay. I can do four of them. I have to send six to eight emails back and forth, back and forth. And to be honest, sometimes people might go on holidays. They might not reply. By embedding just a link, it makes it so simple for the prospect to click one and book directly on your calendar. And one thing I'm going to say we integrated in-house, in and I think we'll talk about this later, is we use Zoom for, our, for webinars and demos today. We actually, Calendly has an integration with Zoom that you can actually, when they book that calendar, your Zoom link will automatically go inside where the meeting will be placed. So it, it just saved our team a lot of time. It made our sales reps a lot more productive. And it's almost like, you know, when, when you ring the bell with you, when you get a sale at a company, it's almost like now when we see an email come in saying we have a Calendly, you know, the sales team's ringing the bell because it's like another demo. So it makes it very easy. Now, setup time is very quick. Um, you know, the first time I think it took me about 25 minutes. Um, but now I can, I can create an event and integrate everything within about seven to 10 minutes. So it's not like it takes a lot of time, but on the back end, oh, it's, it's, it, it's, it's a life changer, especially for our company. As you can see, you know, we've done well over a thousand demos, um, but it just makes the life easier of the SDRs, of the prospects, of just about everybody um, by having that one simple link um, for people to click on a book. Yeah, we're, we're seeing the same thing. Uh, most customers, I think we did a survey recently where about 85% of our <laughs> new users say that they set up Calendly and scheduling automation through Calendly in less than an hour, which oh, wow. is really strange for, for a lot of people buying sales tools because they're not used to it. They're used to them being a little bit heavier. And I think that's something that, uh, that auto closing Calendly have in common that they're built to have you get started and, you, and have ways to have you get on the ground accomplishing your goal a lot faster. Um, and I think that that's just a, it, it's something that we have in common and um, your point about Zoom was, was right on point. That's been a very popular oh. integration for us. And what, what we've discovered is you know, the headache of the back and forth for scheduling yeah. is large, but so is the headache of, now wait, how, how are we supposed to connect? Do we have the right link? Do we know that, am I supposed to call you? Or are you supposed to call me? My Zoom link, your Zoom link, my Hangout, your Zoom. And this just solves it all by including and, and integrating it. We're seeing a lot of a lot of teams really enjoy that feature. Yeah, no, we we love that feature, um, and it just it just makes everything so much easier. And you know, within minutes, you can have people booking. It's ideally you can automate your outreach with an auto close. You can put the link in there and automate your scheduling, and then literally have Zoom there that they just click on the link and you just meet them at the demo. It's it's been uh, it's been definitely a a time saver for us. Yeah, for sure. And we've touched on some of the use cases uh, you mentioned. You mentioned um, that uh, in your initial outreach, your demo versus schedule a quick call, um, and even at conferences. What are, are those? Do you have any other ways that you've used and implemented Calendly in your in your workflows? Yeah, uh, about four months ago. So we did a lot of A/B testing, and about four months ago, um, my CMO actually implemented and put Calendly as our uh, CTA on our website. 
So what we used to do is we would have a contact us or book a demo now and they'd fill out the form. You know, here's your email and all this information. And then we would get an email saying, oh, Sean Finder wants a demo of all the clothes. And then we'd have to email them, oh, here's my calendar link, book a time on with our sales team. But now um, we actually right on our website, you can book a demo and you can choose a time right on the website. So that was actually, I think it was about 19%. I have to double check, but I think it was about 19% higher conversion of actually having the people show up to the demo by having that Calendly right on the website. As soon as they book a demo, our sales team calendar comes on and, and then it will automatically book. And I think something you're going to touch upon later, which is, which was a lifesaver is the round Robin. Cause at first we didn't know how to, um, you know, how do we say, okay, first, de first demo is going to John. Second one's going to Mike. Third one's going to Bill. But the round robin was a, a very cool thing that we integrated. So now that when you book the calendar right on the website, um, it's, it just, it's a lot easier. So yeah, I would say the website, um, conferences was a big one. We recently started using it. Um, and I haven't even touched on is, is social selling on LinkedIn. I mean, I use LinkedIn a lot and I post a lot of content. I post a lot of videos. I do a lot of podcasts and people, you know, they just want to learn more or I'd like to learn more. And just by simply having just the link in my head, it's, you can't forget it. It's just Calendly.com slash my name. Um, it makes it a lot easier. So there's a lot of different use cases we've actually integrated Calendly into our sales stack and our outreach. Yeah, that's exciting. And I think we've, uh, we see a lot of really successful sales teams and, and marketing teams who are responsible for generating uh, qualified leads, be successful, putting Calendly right on their website, either the, demo the book a demo links over to the calendly event and they schedule on calendly yeah. or we have a pretty rich embed product which lets you just put the, the scheduling right there on your website which is really effective and then people don't even have to leave your environment or experience which is which is really great um, we've seen a lot of a lot of teams be uh, be successful in putting those on particular pages so some pages you may want to nurture a bit, and the, again, this is kind of segmenting for intent, but the team that makes it to your white paper on something, right? maybe they have shown the kind of intent where you say, you know what, you, you've got the behaviors, you've made it to the right spot in our website, I want to show you the, the demo right away. So a lot, of, a lot of really high volume, high traffic sites will just put Calendly a little bit deeper where they're sure that the, the, their customers are ready and then they'll start to show there. Um, and we also see, uh, like I mentioned before, not only in like, from website to your nurture campaigns, but then once you've closed a deal, it's really invaluable to have the same kind of scheduling experience go on beyond that. So your onboarding team sends out a very similar pattern, a very recognized pattern of you can book with us, we're available to you when you want to book. Um, we send it out even for some high high priority tickets for support to take of both before and after closing, which is very helpful to have that consistency. And we do that and we see that, that other teams are successful doing that as well. And you, you mentioned earlier that you had some, some specific metrics and you were going to share the, some of the results that you had seen. Um, what does that look like to you? What kind of, what kind of outcomes have you seen since, implementing scheduling automation and in doing so in, in coordination with your sales automation. Yeah. So when, when, when we actually combine the, um, the engage, the sales engagement tool, auto close and the, um, and Calendly, um, I mean, you know, just by looking here, you know, the over, just today, here's three, but you know, over a thousand demos, but we get about our sales team in total, get about 30, 40 demos a week by integrating Calendly inside the tool. Um, and it's just, it just makes it so easy. So I would say we, before we use Calendly, we're averaging about 14 to 18 demos a week by using just the automation. But by using Calendly, before we actually had the partnership, the integration, it went up to about 25 to 30. But now that it's all embedded, um, which we're going to show you in, in a quick five minute demo, it's even increased more. So, um, you know, I, I, I tell all our clients, you know, you, the reason why we wanted this partnership, especially with Calendly is because a, a lot of our clients use it, but B, you know, we like to try things first and it worked for us. So if it works for us, we believe it's going to work for all of our clients and it's going to save everybody that's using AutoClose tons of time. Um, and, and obviously 
um, the ability to make more money. Yeah, you said it. <laughs> That's kind of what it boils down to, making more money, driving more revenue through the pipeline. And, uh, and I kind of mentioned before, uh, you know, it does cut down on the back and forth. It cuts down on the hassle, the weight of having to schedule and do all the administration. That times every seller that you have working on your team uh, really adds up. But then what are those people doing when they're not doing that? They're selling, they're talking to your best leads, they're out there um, being the face of your product rather than just administering the, the process of getting people to, to book meetings. And it's a really powerful tool. Um, and I think that you get that more time selling just, just goes into um, even more productivity selling the, these kind of qualified customers that you're getting booked by based on your nurture programs combined with your uh, scheduling automation programs. I think that um, you seeing demo conversions is something that we see a lot of teams say as well. Um, people are setting up reminders and you, you kind of mentioned sort of the post you didn't attend your event kind of you would you like to reschedule but a lot of people also <laughs> reminders ahead of time either by email or text to say here's like remember we've got this meeting this is what it is it's about this is how we're going to connect so it really gets people not only to show up but to show up prepared um and, and make those meetings more successful which is i think what both of our companies are, are all about yeah one thing i want to add to that actually um a more of a use case for us as well is um, inside, inside Calendly, you can ask questions before. So while they're scheduling their call, you can actually get questions and ask them, you know, how many, how many employees um, your company has, et cetera. So you can also pre-qualify and use those inside your Calendly as well. So use the questions like for our guys, um, our sales times, when somebody books a demo, we already know what their phone number is, how many employees they have, what other tools they're using, are they interested in our database, et cetera. So, when the SDR goes on, they already know all that information before the demo. Right, and I think that that's a really powerful part of the system, just being able to collect anything from questions to demographics, yep. and then even pipe that back into your systems so that you can do something with it. You can, you can use it inside your meeting, but you can also use it in your marketing in the future because you've learned something about your customer and learning something about your customer and prospect is what, is what makes good automation work. Yeah, so maybe I'll jump right in and, and show a quick, uh, a quick demo of how, of how Calendly and, and Autoglow kind of integrate each other and, and how we use Calendly um, right inside. So, um, David, you guys can see the screen, correct? Yes. Perfect. Okay, so I'm going to whiz through it. So um, in four simple steps, um, you can really, you can create your campaign. And in step number three is where we're going to show you how to embed Calendly right there and how the integration works. So the first thing I'm gonna do here is Calendly plus auto close. We're gonna call this webinar, okay? Start date today, um, you choose your time, the days of the week, and then you can set this as a drip campaign or not. So let's just go quickly here to step two, so we can go right to the integration here. Step two, I'm just gonna go through and just pick somebody we wanna email. Let's just go and choose United States. We'll choose marketing person. Let's just choose marketing. Marketing executive, I'll choose 10 to 25. Just to kind of show you how it works, just choose 44 people. So we're gonna add those people to a campaign right now. Okay, so now we get to go to step three where we show how the magic of Calendly happens. So what we've done is we've choose the recipients and then now we wanna build out our sequence template. Now this is the automation part. So I'm gonna to go to, let me just choose, uh, let's do cold template. And we'll do the next step. Okay, so here's for example a campaign. Now here is the six seven email sequence um, that you can you can do and why you want to put obviously your Calendly in here. Now I'm going to show you um, how the Calendly integration works by going here to Calendly. So the first thing you're going to want to do in Calendly um, to show the integration would be Go up to the top and I'm not going to click on it, but you're going to click on integrations. So when you click on integrations, you're going to have an API token at the top. Um, and that API token is what you're going to want to copy and paste into your sales engagement tool. So you can have that integration work. So 
Um, for privacy reasons, I'm not going to show you guys my API. However, you guys each have an API um, once you've signed up for Calendly. And actually, what I should have done is shown you how to set that up right here. But I'm going to skip through here quickly, and we're going to go right to settings, or sorry, integrations here, and here. So now in your integrations, you're going to see Calendly. Once again, I'm not clicking on Calendly because once I click here, you're going to copy and paste your API token right there. And that will actually put the API integration between Calendly and AutoClose together. So the first step for the integration will be you need to get your API token from your Calendly account. Then you're going to want to go into integrations inside AutoClose, click on Calendly, and paste that right in there. So now, ready to go to a campaign. So let me go back to this campaign right here. And I'm going to go right here. Okay, so I'm just going to delete kind of right, 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 right here, or just delete that right here. And as you can see right here, we have all these different things you can do. You can upload attachments. You can personalize a video. So let's just personalize a video while we're going to send this out. We're going to personalize a recorded demo of AutoClose. And what I'm going to want to do is show people that are, let's say, going to the Collision Conference. So um, you can write, I will be at the Collision Conference. Here is my calendar so we can have a coffee. So with the integration now, you'll see this little calendar link right here. You can click on that link and all the different events that you create. So right now I have auto close demo session. Now, when you do that demo session, you can have the 15 or the 30 minutes, but here's conference collision coffee. So my call conference was May 6th. So this was updated, but this was at the conference to book people um, and have a coffee. So I can actually just click that. And now it says collision conference coffee. So I've named the event. Now, if people actually click on here, I'll show you how that works preview it and we're going to click there. This will actually take people directly to where my event was three days ago last week and they can book a coffee with me at the collision conference. So the integration works very easy. Um, it's one simple step. You basically can click on here. You can choose your event and embed it into your engagement. So when you're sending out those six to eight to 10 follow-up sequences, you can choose which one. So you might want to first say, you know, book a demo with me, a 30 minute demo, but in email five, you might want to say, you know, I noticed you didn't want a demo. What about if we just have a 15 minute call? So you can actually create your events and embed them all directly inside your auto close campaigns, which is very robust. So as I said, it's all about, you know, time, um, saving time. Here's an email that I use. And obviously, you know, if I did a second email, I might want to send it seven days later and I can embed another calendar link right here. So just to kind of show you guys, um, if you have any questions about that, we'll, we'll, we'll answer all the questions. Look, we have five questions, but um, you can embed your Calendly, very simple. So the two simple steps, one, go to Calendly, get your API token, two, go to integrations inside AutoClose and copy and paste it, and three, start filling your calendar with demos. As simple as that. That's great. I love how seamless this is. And, uh, and you know, it's really easy to start. Like, like, uh, like sales automation, you start with one good flow and maybe one event. And then when that drop down, it shows one event and you put it in and it works. But then you start to figure out the different kinds of events that work for you and your team. And those start to be more and more. And uh, I like how the interface allows you to see what each event is. It shows, okay, where is it? Um, who is it with, and um, and what's the what's the duration, and the things that you need to know to make sure that you're finding the right event to insert in your flows. It's just really simple and a very tight integration. And of course, on the back end, like you said, the value of putting it in here is that your sales automation knows what happened. Yeah. Now, been sent this meeting, knows you booked this meeting, so that you can do more things to customize the flows. Yeah. And one thing I, I would say, you know, it's an, a tip, I guess, for anyone that's using both is do a little bit of testing, like test putting your calendar in like the first email versus starting in the second or putting in the first, 
and then having the second and third more of like sending white papers, case studies, and then going into it. So, um, and also use different events. I mean, the, the key with Calendly is you can create different events. So name those events. So in your call to action inside your emailing, your email automation, you have the different, you know, collision conference coffee or 30 minute demo or 15 minute call or whatever your event might be. So make sure you use Calendly and use those events wisely because you can, you can have multiple events at one time. And um, as I said earlier on, on the show today, it will help with the, um, with the automation, but it will help with the pre-qualifying. Yeah. And you mentioned earlier, so a couple of events that people are, are really being successful with uh, using Calendly. One is round Robin. Yeah. That allows you to expose um, all of the avail availability on th the team that you choose. So it really lets somebody, when they get to that calendar experience, say you've got four people with the same skill set and, and, um, and client base, uh, they, any one of them can serve the prospect. And what you want to do is serve the prospect as quickly as the prospect is able. So being able to, able to overlay your whole team's availability through our round robin feature has been a, a game changer for, for teams just to make sure that they're delivering the highest service level right when they see interest from qualified uh, leads. Yeah, and we use, we use the round robin as well um, in-house. Um, especially on our, on our, on our initial website, but you can also do it on, you know, if you have SDRs using auto close or, or an engagement tool, you can have that. So it will separate each other. Cause at the first we didn't know, okay, we have all these sales reps and like, they're going to fight for the leads, but with the round Robin, it made it very easy to look. And, um, and actually David, I'm going to ask you a question. Um, cause I'm not even hundred percent sure inside, inside the round Robin, if for example, would it go, person to person's calendar, like say for example, at 3 p.m. today, I'm not available. Would it then give you the ability to book on sales rep two's calendar at 3 p.m.? Yeah, what it does is you, you, don't, you don't really care as the person booking the meeting who you meet with. You're just ah. trying to get a demo or a rep. So it shows times available. And if yeah. all four out of four are available at 2 p.m. and the person books 2 p.m., then it goes to the next one Perfect. kind of pursuant to your rules and your rules can be advantage rep a or it could be make them equally distributed um, but if only one rep is available at two and the rest are available at 5 p.m or tomorrow and you book it to you get the one who's available perfect okay um what do you think David? maybe we should see some some questions we have here let me go i'll go to the Q&A and we'll see. Okay, let's go through. I'm gonna, will, it work, will it work with group calendars if there is a sales team action? Hmm. Group, I think that's kind of what we just talked about the round robins, I believe. Yeah, so it does collect your calendars in that way. So you can round robin, so first available or, or uh, you can equally distribute among team members based on um, when, when the prospect chooses, or uh, it does also allow group events. So I need to be on the phone with my sales manager and a sales engineer at the same time. So it says, when are all three of these people available at the same time so we can get on the phone? Got it. Uh, we have a few more here. Susanna said, I have a Calendly account and I've been using it just to schedule regular interviews and meetings. Great, Suzanne, so have we. Um, she's asking, does Calendly integrate with ConvertKit? Um, so we, we don't have a native integration, okay. but we do integrate with Zapier, which is, yep. which is a tool that takes integrations from, um, from many, many kind of sales tools and allows them to communicate and plug into other sales tools. And that's how most people are integrating, um, that's how most people are integrating. And in fact, if you go to, um, if you go to zapier.com and search for ConvertKit integrations, uh, there you can find, you can find ours there. Perfect. Um, maybe a question for, for you, David, you know, if someone's asking, how can they get started with Calendly? So it's really easy to get started with Calendly. Uh, you just go to Calendly.com. You'll <laughs> sign up. You'll see the sign up link. You put your email address in. You'll see the sign up. Um, 
It's uh, if you put in your, uh, your email that's connected to your calendar, your Office 365, or your Google Calendar, uh, that integration is seamless. It takes no time at all. You just authenticate and you're in. Um, and then you can, you'll immediately be given some scheduling links, a 15 minute scheduling link, and, and you can share that right away. And somebody could go in and book a time with you and it will not be booked over somewhere that's already busy in your calendar because we already know you're free and available. You will have already set up in our onboarding flow um, your kind of hours of operation so we won't, you won't get booked at 11.30 at night unless that's how, how you set them up. Um, so you can really get started in just seeing. Uh, and then the next thing you do is next time you have a meeting or next time you want to have a meeting, share that link. Email it to someone. Say, hey, how about we meet and send, and this is um, to make scheduling more convenient. Use this link to find whatever time suits you on my schedule um, in an enticing way, and somebody will book. And without you lifting a finger, you will have gotten a meeting you wanted, and you'll see the magic, and then, then you'll dig in a little deeper and, and customize it and really make it yours. Perfect. It uh, looks like Bill's asking, um, I want a free... You, uh, you guys offer a 14 day free trial as well, right? So I think both AutoClose and Calendly offer a free 14 day trial. And I think our, our team, when we send the recording of this, you'll get all the information, all the links for you guys. Yes. Uh, we have Chris. Can you talk about how to add Calendly with the questions to your website like we have on the AutoClose site? So how that works is what we've done is we've embed Calendly as our call to action on our website. So um, more of my marketing team did, so for what I know, when you book your event inside Calendly, you can actually customize your questions you want to ask that recipient or that prospect. And once you customize that, as soon as they go on AutoClose website now and book a demo um, of how the platform works, the five questions are actually done through the Calendly side. And you can book it on your time and you can ask the questions directly through Calendly. So, um, and, and, and I said, it, it took us about seven minutes to create an event, it doesn't take long. So definitely um, ask some questions um, and it works really well on websites. As I said, it helped us with our conversion, but thanks, Chris. We have some other ones. Um, can I use automated scheduling for any stage of my sales pipeline? Yeah, I think that, I think that's what makes it most successful is if you use it at every stage of your sales pipeline. Um, I think that we're, we use it right at the beginning. So we want website visitors to turn into demos. And then once we have a demo, we want to make sure that the next meeting we get on the books, it happens as quickly as possible. Otherwise, you know, maybe I have my one week check-in in the middle of our trial and I say, hey, this is the one week check-in, let's get back on the phone. If that takes another three, four days, just to schedule a meeting, five, six, seven, eight days, if I've also got to and other people from the team, um, then, then that's a significant amount of time added to our sales cycle. So we highly suggest that you make every meeting throughout your sales cycle uh, automated and much faster. And then of course, it's not just the getting the meeting on the books, but it's having the, the automations around it, the reminders. What if you missed it? The make sure that you've got the uh, the right uh, the right kind of buffers set up for it because you understand what kind of meeting preparation you need for this style of meeting. It's uh, it's everything that comes with the administration of that meeting and the workflows that scheduling automation has, but also uh, that sales automation helps with throughout your pipeline. Yeah. Looks like I have a few more for me and a few more for you here. So um, one is, will there be a recording? Yes, we will be recording this. Um, the second one is for me, how do we get access to the AutoClose database? Um, if you want access to the database, um, go to our calendar and book a demo. <laughs> uh, Calendly.com slash Sean Finder. Um, here we have one Zeta. Does Calendly integration with, work with more than one calendar, i.e. Google Calendar and is it Nosby? Nosby? I don't even. And so, so currently, um, Calendly doesn't integrate with two calendars of the same person. Um, 
that's something that we're considering for our roadmap because a lot of people want to, you know, kind of the blending of personal and professional or operating, you know, multiple businesses or multiple sort of faces of your business. Maybe you have different calendars. So that's something that is requested uh, that we're, we're definitely highly considering for our roadmap. Um, now, uh, we do support different kinds of calendars. So if you come to us and say, well, we're a Google calendar organization, support you you come to us and say we're an office 365 organization will support you and i think that's one of the values of using a tool like calendly is that we uh we're built to to be more interoperable with with whatever calendar you're choosing and kind of whatever your whole stack and technology that might look like perfect we have naomi that's asking uh, you david i'm looking for a way to schedule schedule events across a team of around 40 but I want some additional rules, such as every staff member must have a one hour lunch break during the day. Is there any way, any easy way to implement this? So, um, schedule with a group of 40. So you'd have 40 calendars. Yep. And if each person blocked on their calendar, their own lunch time, and they would, yeah, they would, the rules would say, they're all busy. And even if all the lunch times were different, you know, Amy is busy between 11 and noon. Daryl is busy between noon and one. It would take that into account. Yeah. And it would not book over those people while still obeying the rules of using them all as a full, a full resource to schedule first available. Perfect. Um, so can you tell me the difference between sales automation and marketing automation? Yeah, no, great question. So sales automation is more of a personalized um, email sequence that is usually or almost always a text email. When you're using a marketing automation, you can be using MailChimp, you can be using HubSpot, et cetera. You're gonna be sending those pretty HTML emails that could be used for newsletters, blogs, et cetera. The whole point of sales is to take those people that are kind of warmer leads and nurture them through the sales funnel. Now, one other big difference is sales automation emails directly from your email, from your Google, your Exchange, your Office. Marketing automation, you are connected to their, plat to their servers and emailing directly from their servers. So if you're emailing inside a Marketo, a HubSpot, a Pipedrive, et cetera, or any other marketing or CRM, you're emailing from their servers. So that's the big difference is, um, is the personalization and where the emails come from. So um, I, we have another question for, for you, David. What sets Calendly apart from other scheduling automation tools out there? I think one thing is the, the invitee experience. And this is, this is huge. So when you use Calendly to schedule, the person on the other side just gets such a seamless, smooth experience and it, it looks simple, it behaves simply, they're able to find time simply, it's very clear what they're doing, what they're supposed to do, and it's very easy. And I think that that's the first step. It just really makes you, as somebody who's inviting somebody to a meeting, shine, because the user experience and the design is uh, so pleasant and intuitive to use. I think that's probably the first thing. I think another, uh, another thing you want to look for is flexibility. So can you use it for multiple use cases? Could you send a link from your personal email? Could you send a link from your social media? Could you embed it on your website? Could you use it in your sales automation? Could you, uh, could you use it where and when you want? Could you um, pick five times and embed them right into an email and send that off for a, for a certain type of meeting? Um, and then use it in your sales automation as, a, as one of your links in a different way. So I think that flexibility of use, if you, if you think you might want to, to use it in multiple ways to really get the value of scheduling automation, I think it really sets Calendly apart and we're a clear winner there. Perfect. Uh, looks like uh, Darla, Sean, do you offer sales training on sales automation to sales teams? Uh, yes, I do. Um, we do an onboarding. I also do uh, training as well. Uh, I do a lot of speaking. Um, easy Darla, Calendly.com slash Sean Finder. Book a time with me. You'll see my schedule right there. Um, we have another question. How do I make my automation less automated sounding? The key is personalization. Um, you want to make sure that in that email, you want to 
you want it to sound like it's a one-to-one -one email, that you're not sending it to hundreds of people. So I always tell people, do a little bit of due diligence. Know a little bit about the person um, when you're sending those emails out. Now, that could be putting tokens into your engagement tool. I mean, to auto close, for example, you can auto, you can put your company job position. If you have custom fields, like for example, uh, we had a company that did it was a property manager and they want to reach out to a different business and say, well, I know your, your property is 18 by 50. You can actually add those custom tokens into your message. So it feels like it's one to one. So how to make it sound less automated, make it sound as personable as possible and don't send long emails. Send a nice, short, concise email that talks about how you can help them with their challenges and don't talk about yourself. Um, don't talk about what you can do. So that's the best way to make it sound um, less automated. And one more thing I'll say on that is the, the way you sound, you make it sound automated when you say, hi, my name is Sean Feiner. I'm the CEO of AutoClose. I want to talk about this. Never do that. That first three seconds, make it sound personalized. Talk about the challenges they, they might be facing. Talk about the value your company does, like Calendly, you know, saves us hours and hours a week in scheduling demos. That's what you want to do to make it sound um, less automated. Let's see if we have any other ones here. I'm looking up here quickly. Um, how do I get people to show up to my demos? I, I would say follow-ups, using follow-ups, correct, uh, David? Yeah, using follow-ups um, is key, either by email or SMS, text, um, or uh, you know, another way is just to be, you know, to continue the nurture, right? So you don't necessarily book a meeting and then take them out of the flow. That's just more knowledge that you've got in your sales automation tool. So use that to start nurturing them a different thing. Build excitement to the meetings and the materials for the meeting. Make sure that they keep understanding the value that they were thinking about when they booked that meeting in the first place. So they're still as excited about it by meeting day. Perfect. Um, so it looks like, you know, maybe we'll just, we'll, we'll just kind of finish up here and maybe David, just, uh, I guess, let everyone know, you know, if they have any questions or anything about Calendly, um, they want to, um, you know, they're an auto close client. They want to start using Calendly. What's the best way for them to get started? Um, who should they reach out to? Should they just go to the website and sign up for 14 days? What do, you, what do you think the best way to someone to get started right now with Calendly would be? Yeah, by far the easiest and, and, uh, and kind of most experiential way is just to get started. We have a free trial. Um, and then beyond that, we have a free product that you can continue using with one event. So you can really give it a good test. Um, it's really quick to see the value. And kind of when, once you see that magic and you start to think about how it's going to impact your sales pipeline, um, you'll, you can dig in a little bit deeper and it's really easy to do that. We've got a bunch of help articles and you can always get our support or sales people. Um, you'll have ample opportunities, but definitely the easiest way to get into it is just go to calendly.com and put in your email address and start your trial off. Perfect. And for auto close, um, same thing, go to our website, www.autoclose.com. We have a free 14 day trial. You can, right when you log in, you could put your calendar link and, and put the integration. If you have any questions about the integration, um, you can email me at Sean, S-H-A-W-N at autoclose.com. But better yet, we have live support in the bottom right hand corner. Tell them you're integrated in connecting your Calendly. We will walk you through how to get your API token from Calendly, put it into autoclose. Because I said, it's gonna save you tons of time it makes your sales reps way more productive. Um, so that would be the best thing to do. Um, I know, uh, I think on Thursday or Friday this week, you will receive a recording. We'll also be sending um, a links to 14 days for both Calendly and AutoClose. And just to finish up, uh, David, anything else um, that you'd like to add before we, uh, we finish up here? No, just that I appreciate the opportunity to, to talk to all of you today. Um, I'm really excited about AutoClose and Calendly and the integration. Um, and, uh, and happy, happy to spend some time talking about it today. Perfect. Thank you guys so much for attending. Um, you'll receive an email from either Calendly side or auto close side on Thursday. I'm not sure who, but one of us will be sending you an email with everything you need to know. Um, have a great week. Good luck closing and 
put Calendly into your, uh, into your automation tools. Um, we've used it. I've showed you the results over a thousand Calendly's book. Um, and thank you guys so much and hope to hear from you guys soon. Take care. Take care. Thank you.